Hello everyone. Uh, I see that News Hub is getting rinsed out on X for one of their articles. Uh, uh, I thought some of the comments were really funny, so I, I thought I would um, I'd cover it and respond. Uh, for those who don't know, News Hub is a far left um, a media organisation inside New Zealand who who built a business model on taking money from the previous Labour regime to simply regurgitate. Um, talking points on behalf of the Labour and Green Party politburos, and when the money dried up, uh, blamed their own audience for going under. Their, their final day of operation, I understand, is the 5th of July, about three weeks from now, uh, which I'm calling uh, News Hub's Learn to Code Day. Uh, okay, so here's the article, or rather the coverage in question, and what people are mostly objecting to that is, is the... Um, is the title of the article, which is Far Right Parties Gain Popularity with Young EU Voters. Uh, and I'll get into some of the comments about that in a moment. But reading the article itself, what really struck me, uh, they're talking about how um, there's the rise of what they're calling the far right uh, in Europe and how um, this is being driven amongst the young by uh, far right politicians engaging on uh, the, the platforms that um, social media uh, users who are young tend to use. Uh, well, look, news for you, News Hub, young voters use TikTok and Instagram, and so politicians go there to interact with them. This is not something to wring your hands about. Now, in News Hub's defense here, they are actually just reprinting an article from Reuters, but they've just done so uncritically. Now, throughout the article, they're talking about this particularly in relationship to uh, Germany with the AFD, and and uh, they also make uh, mention of France and uh, Rassemblement National, the the, the far right party of um, of Jordan Bardella. Uh, and the comment that really stuck stuck out to me was this one: where they're talking about uh, this dude from the AFD. Sorry, I've never heard of him, but he has some fifty three thousand followers on TikTok compared to just 11,000 and 2,600 respectively, the leading candidates for the centre-left Social Democrats and the Greens. Okay, well, that's, you know, that's really, really fascinating news hub. But um, what about uh, Jordan Bardella, who has a very good chance of being the next Prime Minister, who's 28 years old, is probably the centre of uh, attention amongst uh, the political elite in Europe at the moment who has 1.6 million followers. Did you just think for a moment that might be worth mentioning in your article? Who cares about some German dude who's got 53,000 when this guy's got 1.6 million followers? Anyway, coming back to the article, what, what a lot of the people um, commenting objected to was the term uh, far right. Uh, and uh, there were some, some pretty interesting comments from people that uh, I follow. Uh, one is John O'L, who says, uh, not far right unless you admit to being far left. Yeah, bang on, mate. That's exactly right. News Hub is a far left news organization who blamed their own audience for not being woke enough for the reason they're going out of business, and it can't happen soon enough. But all of these comments, they kind of reflect um, uh, 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 a little bit of a focus at the moment on semantics. And I see this uh, in Spiked. Um, Spiked's talking about uh, Europe's populist surge. Okay, so what the, the point that um, that uh, organisations like Spiked are making is that the, the public are sick of everyone being described as far right and not being other when they when they they, they possibly are not, and the far left are uh, getting a pass. And this is particularly true in New Zealand, where we have an extreme left wing. Uh, uh, party in, in terms of the Greens, um, who, who are never described in those sorts of terms. So there seems to be a bit of a push amongst um, the commentariat to, to sort of say, okay, well, are these people far right or are they populist? And uh, Douglas Murray, uh, the public intellectual, Douglas Murray, uh, he, he, he certainly says a lot of interesting things, not everything I agree with. Um, he covered this quite, quite well in The Spectator uh, overnight. In an article titled "The Trouble with Calling Everyone Far Right," and the point he makes in here that I thought was 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 one I really agree with is he says, um, "In any case, the success of the national rally, uh, which means Rassemblement National, 
in the EU elections was not put down to any failings of President Macron, but rather to the infamous march of the far right. As a term, I find this less and less satisfactory. He, he does have a point here, right? Like, um, you know, uh, to a, a lot of these parties, yeah, they're kind of borderline, uh, you know, like if, if you look at it on a spectrum between what is populist, what is far right, what is fascist, you know, where do any of these parties uh, uh, fall on that continuum? I think to a large degree, it's a matter of opinion. And um, I'm personally, uh, you know, I'm, I'm never going to, to describe the AFD and the AFD and Rassemblement National in any other terms than far right. I don't think that they're fascist, but I think I, I think describing them as populist is is um, is is not accurate either. Uh, but you know, these guys they have a fair point, right? Like the these sorts of terms that are derogatory. Uh, towards right-wing parties simply are never leveled at the left. Okay, um, so on to the next thing. I did say that I would talk about um, what's happening in French politics. Um, so this was covered in Le Monde overnight. Uh, I, as I told you yesterday, there was a court case with with um, with uh, Eric Chiotti, and yes, the court's found it in his favour, so he remains the president of the Republican Party. Um, which is which is interesting. Um, apparently, this means that he can actually select candidates. Now, I saw that reported. I don't know that that's true. That that is entirely his decision to make. Um, but they are saying that it is. So anyway, for the moment, um, he is still in control of of um, of the Republicans and doing business. Uh, the other thing I talked about is how the left were going to be releasing their um, combined policy platform. Um, which they did, uh, and they're talking about how um, their their priorities are uh, price freeze on food and energy, and the situation in Ukraine and Gaza. Okay, well, look, you know that's. I mean, the left wonder why they're losing popularity. These are not things that are particularly of concern to anyone, let alone the majority of the French electorate. Right? You know this this climate change nonsense and international uh, conflicts. Um, there are domestic problems that need to be addressed. Uh, okay, and finally, uh, uh, Jordan Badella, who I mentioned, you know, 1.6 million followers on uh, on on um, TikTok that News Hub doesn't think is worth mentioning. Uh, he is saying um, there will be a common candidate with the Republicans in 70 constituencies. Okay, so what this means is that there is kind of like an alliance between them, at least while Chiotti remains uh, a leader of the Republicans. And so they're not going to stand candidates against one another in the interests of having one of them win, uh, which is all very fascinating. And it will be interesting to see what happens next week. OK, that's all from me. Uh, thank you for tuning in to Simon TV. Hope you all have a lovely weekend and I will speak with you again soon.